live since I haven't I haven't been the one broadcasting it's been you okay hang on one second here All right, let's see what's happening here. I think, it, you know, I just had an idea. We could start a new channel uh -huh. uh, where we just sit there and do nothing. Okay. That's what I was doing a second ago. I'm just sitting there looking at the camera. <laughs> Good happen. Rhinos. Mm -hmm. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Looks like we're live. Okay, so do we have any audio? Let me look. Ooh, I don't know. I hear background noise, but I'm not hearing us. There it goes. I hear me anyway. What's that? I, yeah, I, I hear me just fine. Oh, you were able to get on. What about me? Did you hear me? Yeah, it sounds like we're both through. Okay, cool. <coughs> All right. We're broadcasting. We're going to start here in just a couple minutes. I'll let me get in the chat here and let people know what's up. Chat, 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 chat. Chat, one, two. Chat, one, two. Mm-hmm. Just Friday afternoon. Hanging out. I feel like I should be wearing a... Hawaiian shirt, even though I don't own any Hawaiian shirts. Right. It just feels like that kind of day. Even though to my body, it feels like it should be Saturday. Oh, yeah, that's right. You've been gone in Japan for the last week. How was that? That looked like that was fun. I'm totally jealous. I'm sorry, I can't listen to you and type. Did you ask me how the trip was? <laughs> I went, total silence. Jeff is not giving any details about Japan at all. He's like, nope. Nope, Jeff. nothing. You get nothing. Jeff, like, uh, what's the, my, my caption? Not a multitasker. Yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Oh, I see it's four o'clock. You want to get going? Yep. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. So, hello. Hello, everybody. It's uh, yet again Jeff Carpenter. Oh, wait, I'm the not host. Me. Oh, you're, you're going to do it? You're going to do it? You oh, are David let me, Gilardi, and you're going to do me most back. of the talking today. I'll, I'll, stop, I'll stop then. And I'm, I'm Jeff Carpenter, stopping. and I'm here to make oh, you look that's... good. That should be... And to, challenging. That yeah, challenging. and to ask mm -hmm. uncomfortable yeah. questions at awkward moments. Yeah, well, I, I I get to do this to you all the time, so. Oh yeah, it's turn it off. Actually, my it might be kind of fun. So, what yeah, are we talking about today, David? All right, so let's see. So, and you know, throughout this whole series, right, that you and I have been talking about things in killer video and and uh, the types of things you've been doing, we have in the past mentioned. The killer video all in one. So, oh, by the way, uh, all I right. noticed I'm not sharing my screen. So that would probably help Yeah. if I share my screen. I was going to mention that. Mm -hmm. I just thought, like, you wanted to personalize Details. it. Well, always, you know. The personal always, touch right. so before now... you really get rolling, you know? Uh, so uh, so there. There's my screen. Yay. Okay, good. Great. Yeah, so... So we've had the the Killer Radio project out now for, geez, how many years? Like three, four years or something. Um, and again, 
That being, for those who might not be familiar with it, right, Killer Video is uh, one of our reference applications here on the Advocate team that we build. So people can get, just get in and start coding and, and get code examples, working code examples, right, and all that kind of deal. So we, we've we had multiple language variants out there, Java, C Sharp, Node.js, just recently Python, thanks to you, Jeff, that we've talked about on the show. And we have talked about the all-in-one. Uh, what the all-in-one is is, so we've got these language variants out there, but in the past, what we've done is if if we kind of set all the configuration point, all the launching done from those versions. So let's say that I wanted to come in in Java and I wanted to do something with killer video and I wanted to see what this is all about. I want to get examples, that kind of deal. Um, I would go to, you know, most likely the killer video Java. You know, I'd go to the killer video repo here, uh, the main one. I'd find killer video Java. This is at least what we tell people to do. And then I would go and follow the instructions here and do all the things. Um, and that's fine and all, um, but as much as we try to make that simple, quick, and easy, at the end of the day, there are parts of it that were not simple, quick, and easy. Uh, so one of our other advocates, Alex, went off and, uh, you know, we had kind of created, asked him to create this project that would make this a lot easier, right? Make it a lot more uh, concise, if you will. So he went and created this killer video all in one. That's where I'm at right now this github.com slash killer video, killer video all in one. Uh, and I'm actually, I think I'm safe to say now, I feel confident in saying this, that today, if someone were to ask me about killer video and they were curious about downloading the ecosystem and getting it running, I would send them right here, right? As compared to one of the individual mm -hmm. language variants. Here, here. Part of the reason why, yeah, here, here, let's do it. Let's just, we're just gonna commit and go. Um, at this point, I think we've tested it pretty well. Um, I've been banging on it for weeks. And I know we've had others looking at it, you know, uh, separate from me. And I feel like um, we had an execution fail because we actually decided this morning, our time, so <laughs> U.S. time, and about 5 p.m. <laughs> Central European time, that this would be the great time to push the button on merging all our PRs and taking all of the uh, <laughs> candidate release tags off of everything, right? And then yeah, so I like how I, I just want to point out how Jeff just used the that we made we had an execution fail. Really, it's I had an execution fail because I'm the one who totally didn't realize because someone had been barking down it. your neck for like a month. And when was this going to happen? But, okay, but, so I know, bear some responsibility of, here. Yeah, but I I pulled the trigger right. I just went, all right, we're doing this today. Go right, and uh, but anyway, here's the good thing is that. Alex was Alex was actually online, even though it was probably beer time uh, in in Germany. Um, but he was able to make some minor minor updates just to the Docker Compose channel. We could have a separate discussion oh. on the compatibility of beer and code. I feel like there's a whole <laughs> other genre. To yeah, dive, that's to dig into the weather. Is that compatible? Yeah. I don't know. We can, we can find out. We should have an episode on that. Um, but but so now, yeah. At this point, though, at the, it was really minor changes, right? Because to your point, um, the all in one it does bring together all of the the various um, pieces of the ecosystem, right? So without getting too deep into it, um, in Killer Video, not only do you have the core business logic app, but you have all these other microservices that are there, right? The generator that generates data to make it looks like the, the app is live. The web UI, which facilitates the front end. Um, we have all these back end services. We were using things like etcd um, to keep track of where things like Apache Cassandra were or where our services were so they could talk to each other and stuff. But there were all these moving parts, right? Um, and so some of it got a little complex. So the all-in-one actually consolidates this greatly. Not only does it do that, but it adds support for Kubernetes, right? So we've got Docker and then Kubernetes. Um, and uh, we used to have, if you went to like the killer video Java repo, uh, you see for Docker, we had this setup, um, a setup script you'd have to run. It would do funny things with networking. That honestly came from an earlier version of Docker with uh, the Docker toolkit and all sorts of things that we no longer need to do. So it, it was a marvel simple. of circa 2016 docker engineering yeah that's, that's it, it that's it right there exactly so we we needed to evolve it's been evolved right so i would say at this point if you're looking to get in a killer video and you want to use any of the language variants at all um then the killer video on one is the place to start right now to be clear this particular configuration is not really meant for development so much right um, we'll, we'll get to that. We've been talking about that one in previous episodes, but we'll, we'll get to that eventually. This is really, I want to get this thing up running. I want to get 
Data Sex Enterprise, you know, with Apache Cassandra. I want to, I want to get that up. I want to get the environment up. I want to see this thing work. I want to get it in Kubernetes. How do I do all that, right? That's where the all-in-one really comes into play. And oh, by the way, I want to use the Java version. I want to use the Node.js version. Whatever. That is a one-line switch in the Docker Compose YAML, and you can you can get all the different variants going. Um, so we finally got to a point where we got everything good. We also promoted all of the extra services, things like generator, the web UI, and the DSC config from being release candidates to full-on full releases. Um, so the latest versions are uh, all uh, 3.0. As a matter of fact, if I pop into our Docker Compose YAML real quick, you'll see here's my web image is now 3.0. Um, ignore, totally ignore that one. Just ignore that one. We're working on that right now. Um, DSC, by the way, you'll notice I should I need to update these this, this to 6.4, 6.7.4 to get to the latest. Um, but it is pretty darn late version of DSC. Uh, same thing with DSC config and the generator. So they're all now promoted past the release candidates. Um, and so we're ready to go. So if I come down here and I've obviously already, you know, uh, done my And these uh, are the etcd. There's no etcd. All these versions That's right. are... They, find, they do the service discovery by names. Yes, okay. yes. This part is so much cleaner. Um, we no longer need SCD, and it works both this way for Docker and uh, Kubernetes, right? So what I did earlier today is I just started fresh, right? Um, so if we take a look at my branch, I'm on master. Um, I don't think... I've got some very... Whoopsie. I have some very minor changes... Um, uh, in, yeah, no, as a matter of fact, I don't. I don't have any changes at all. What you're seeing here with the, the K8s, the Kubernetes directory, is because earlier when I ran this in Kubernetes, I generated new uh, YAMLs based off of my current configuration. But other than that, this is pretty much stock exactly how I cloned it, right? Um, now, if we look at his examples here uh, and the Docker Compose setup, right? So I've cloned it, and I'm in the directory, right? You can see I'm in here. By the way, I should notice or note that Anyone using iTerm on Mac, um, the new iTerm got released. It's really awesome. Like, there's some really nice features that they have. Um, if you notice, I've got this little like, this like little what? bar down here. Well, like, for one, I notice the bar down yet, at the bottom? So. Oh, yeah, no, I like it. Um, the bar at the bottom uh, it allows you to pull in some of your system stats. So things like my CPU use, utilization, how much RAM I'm using, download, upload, where I'm at. I mean, I, you know, I, I kind of like PWDs. Uh, I do that all the time anyway, but I have the current directory. You know, what am, what am I actually doing? So it's actually pretty neat that it does that. Um, they have a bunch of new stuff that they've added for, like, the theming and, and to make it look nice and all sorts of cool little stuff in there. So I, I like iTerm 2 in particular, not iTerm, but iTerm 2, and uh, they just had this new update. So anyway, I pulled that down. That's been cool. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and follow the instructions on the page, right? So like I said, I've already cloned. I'm in the directory. I'm just going to run this. I'm not messing with anything. I'm not changing anything, whatever, right? Now, I have obviously previously run it, which means I've downloaded all the images without having to make you guys all wait for that. Oh, and I fail. Oh, I love this. Why did I fail? That was... What's going on? That is a totally new one. That was like a just complete... Bum, bum. And you have a sad trombone you can play right there. Yeah, that just totally, totally failed. Okay, well, let's do this. Kitematic failed? Or, uh, no, or no, I, I... Yeah. Ugh. No, uh, the web UI. The web UI totally just went... Meh, meh, meh. I gotta move this here. There we go. Oh, oh, something's already on 3000. That's... Okay, fine. Let me... Um, I was oh, gonna do the turnabout right. like you did to me. Like... Oh, aren't you already running an entire copy of the killer I, video stock already, Jeff? I know. Then, I, uh, I know what it is. Yeah, I know exactly what it is. This is something I need to... Okay, I could do this one of two ways. It's Kubernetes. It's the Docker Kubernetes I have running, mm -hmm, and I forgot what part mm -hmm. of its service, but it uses 3000. Now, technically, I should just be able to change this in my... Com yeah, so what we can do... Is say my access point is actually going to be say thir whoopsie, thirty one hundred, oh, right? Just expose it at a different port. Yeah, let's see okay. if that does so it. You don't have to take because... down your Kubernetes because you did, you don't want to take down your other installation. 
Correct. I mean, yeah. if I when I have it running in Kubernetes, um, it won't matter because the port will be generated differently from that. But I'm curious to see if I can just do it this way. All right, here we go. That's better. So that should run. I'm going to move this over. So I have a watch going on my Docker PS over on the left-hand side. It's kind of a little redundant from what I'm doing in Kitematic, but it's a little bit more up-to-date. There we go. That's looking better. So... Uh, there's, absolutely, there's also a couple other things going on here. Uh, where is my DSC? Yeah, so the DSC config, it's still going to wait. It's got to wait for DSC to come up and do its thing, right? Um, before it can really do anything. But if you remember in the past, what we did here because of a race condition, because DSC config is responsible for setting up all of my data model, getting my search indexes created, creating my graph schema, all that, right? Th things that Killer Video needs. But I don't want my application trying to connect and do things if that's not in place. So in the past with that CD, we had a little part at the end of DSC config that would wait till it was done, and then it would set a bunch of keys. And that was kind of how we were hackily getting past the race condition, right? Yeah. Um, oh, and God. it was hacky. Something that I want to talk, ask you about this, because this is kind of... Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. Yeah, go ahead. No, yeah, I'm what's your, what's your question? From a, well, I've been, oh. I was trying to integrate, as I was trying to do the integration for the Python service implementation yeah i i was kind of running into this and i reached the point where i was feeling like i needed to add something to my services to the startup loop to check for the existence of this dummy key space oh you know we did talk about this a little and bit I last week but we didn't remember. get there and then yes, it sounded like you, there was some reason why i didn't have to but i haven't really yes understood that so i'm i'm what i'm gonna do is while we're waiting for this Let's go into the DSC config. Let's take a chance. Let's take a chance. All right, so the latest here should, in fact, be 3.0. But all right, let's just go here because mm -hmm. we want to go to 3.0. This is the latest yeah. release. I have a hunch, if I remember right, if we take a look at the bootstrap, he must have put something in here that does that uh, rudimentary... Um, remember we create like a dummy key space and That's, he put some data yep, in there to yep. check... Um, I'm wondering, does he do it in here real fast? Because, oh, force bootstrap. What's this? Force... Here it is. Here it is. It is in the bootstrap. That makes so much more sense. So you don't need to do this from the Python standpoint. The question, though, okay. which I Here's have. Here's where I'm going to argue with you. Because yeah. I was running it, and I put in a retry loop in my Python services that yeah. it's uh, – What's inside the loop is it tries to create a cluster and session object. Okay. If it is yeah. unable, if it gets an exception during that process, in other words, because the DSE is not up yet, because we're starting in parallel, okay. right? These are containers starting at the same time, but one depends on the other. Okay. So my Python services are checking for the port to be available. Um, I was getting errors about no such table because the schema had not been initiated. So it was succeeding in connecting to DSE. Okay. Uh, but it was not trying to check for the dummy key space. And the dummy key space is what DSE config uh, does so that it knows, hey, I don't have to set, I don't have to configure the schema because it's already configured. Okay. I was thinking that the Python services should also check for the existence of that key space because I've seen it come up in a state where it could connect to DSE, but the schema hadn't been initiated yet. And so it was failing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I hear you. Um, so I do see he's got that going on. So there's, there's just still this, you know, we really need to just <laughs> ask Alex and mm -hmm. figure out because... Okay. From the, from the, I mean, it's clearly there, right? It's clearly in the bootstrap. Um, and he does have it there. And I hear you from that, from the standpoint of, well, wait a minute. Won't we run into the same problem, right? Where it's going to try to, it's like partially connected, but not quite there because everything is ready or whatever. Um, I do know that s separate from what we were doing before with etcd and the way we were having to do the keys, so far in my runs of this, it's really smooth. Like the app, if you watch, and here it goes, watch. Oh, let's see if it calls me, if it gets me wrong. 
Mm. So it's going to keep attempting, right? It's going to keep attempting. So the Java V2, by the way, this is the Java V2 code in here, yeah. I should mention. Um, so this is the new version that we are evolving to in the Killer Video Java project. Um, it is much, much updated. Um, it's been, there's been a lot of refactoring. It's actually upgraded to Java 11. Um, there's been newer code put into play. I mean, we've, we, we'll have to talk about that later, right? Um, but what will happen here... Um, is it will it, it's obviously doing a check right um and it can only go so far with that um yeah so i'm curious like what prevents this from running into the same problem you're running into in python right because the java version doesn't really have that issue so much like it'll do it properly all right let's see All right, almost there. I'm just doing the graph stuff. Once it finishes this, then it'll then it's going to go ahead and write that key space is what it's going to do. The dummy key space. My favorite part, waiting, waiting right here. But now I'm curious though because while we're waiting yet again, I am very curious about the Java version, the new Java version has this check in it. Now, I'll admit, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know Cedric's code that great just yet. Um, so trying to find where he's got this might be interesting. I may give up. Uh, let's see. Because there's got to be a chunk of code that does a check. Because that's the whole point of having that in there. He's got that in, wouldn't be in his DAO, that wouldn't make any sense. Can't imagine that being in the DAO. Watch it be in the DAO. Well, uh, I don't, I can't imagine it would be there. No. No, 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 because Cedric writes more generic code. That's for, I wonder if it's in the service discovery. Doesn't look like it. Okay, this should almost be done. Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's close. Ron, do you have any uh, ideas on that one? Jeff, I already went in there. No, no. I tried looking at for, for it myself and didn't see anything that was what I was looking for. So yeah. I was possibly looking for the wrong thing. Or there's no mechanism and there's a latent race condition just waiting to be exposed in uh, hmm. I, well, here's <laughs> so the thing, service though. implementations. I, <laughs> yeah, I hear you there. But the fact that this has a check... The way that it does tells me there must be a condition that it is looking for because it is not attempting to finish the connection. It's not attempting to, to actually connect up and do things with the app. So that tells me there's got to be something there. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, maybe this is what I was looking for. Ooh, let's see. Oh, don't oh, come on. <laughs> Guess not. All right. I'm going to... Okay, good. This part's done, right? So that should have dropped off the DSC config. Now, something I noticed is um, all of my, in this case, now this is one of the big differences between what happens in Docker and what happens in Kubernetes. This is actually really cool. Notice that my generator, web, and Java are all off, right? They all stopped because yep. they all timed out is what it is. Now, I'm going to go ahead. Now, the reason part of that is, honestly, is because I have found without a doubt. Oh, stop it. I found without a doubt that when I am on, like, blue jeans or whatever, um, it it sucks up so much CPU bandwidth on my machine that it takes DSC and everything that much longer to actually start up. So what ends up happening is 
these guys timing these are timing out now something say, i think sorry did you say cpu and bandwidth no or... cpu bandwidth yeah i just i can combine those is that a thing um, what, probably not but <laughs> my cpu resources how about that okay I say cpu resources okay. yeah sorry okay. sorry these are the types of things i do to you all the time too i'm like excuse me jeff did, was that the right word did you really mean you to probably you? don't do um, that to me but yeah, it's fine. You never know. I, I wouldn't doubt myself. But one thing I noticed here is that we're just doing so many uh, retries over like a two second period. Maybe that should be an exponential retry, right? Something that will help it wait a little bit longer because that's all it is. Yeah, but um, is it and really... Now you can... I'm sorry, the, the font size is a little small for me to see. Oh, I'm sorry. What I'm is sorry. Oh, I get to saying? do that to you every time. Like what's in that? What's happening in that retry loop again? Yeah, let's see. Can you do this? Boom. <laughs> That's a little big. Jeff, you got your bifocals on? I'm not is an old man, funny? David. Okay. I'm, Actually, I'm working I, on it. I am. <laughs> Actually, I am. But... All right, here. Let's go with this. So if I scroll up, way up. Mm -hmm. Right. You see in the retry loop, he just he it just tries every two seconds. Yeah. So and then if it, it takes too long. Further. I thought there was. Yeah. It's going to eventually exit after 100 loop. attempts. Is there not a. Oh. No. Oh. no oh. But this is the big difference with Docker. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In this case, there's nothing saying to restart that particular container, right? Um, yeah. So if it times out because the database took too long or something, then it and then it just will. This is one of the big differences from the Kubernetes standpoint, mm -hmm. which I'm gonna I'm gonna get there, which is actually really cool. Um, so now though, if we take a look, we'll see that we're actually all connected up. Um, matter of fact, I should. I'm surprised the web preview is not there. Let me go ahead and plop up. There it goes. It just my box is lagging. Yeah, it is amazing the amount of um, CPU that uh, Blue Jeans, when you have your video on, takes. It, it does make a difference. And I decrease the. Uh... Try that again. Oh, 3100. My bad. I remember I changed the port. So used to doing 3000. Okay, so wonderful. App is running, right? Everything's there. So, so separate from the fact that there was a little bit of lag, uh, you know, to get my DSC and everything up uh, initially. Um, other than that, all it is is do a git clone of the all-in-one repo and go through these instructions right here. That's it. It's three lines. Done. Right? Um, so that part of it is pretty simple. And again, the only reason why I couldn't use 3000 is because I have Kubernetes enabled through Docker. Right? Okay. Um, so what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to kill this because it's fun. And then we're going to go and have more fun in, in Kubernetes. And this is actually one of the areas where I think even though... Um, Kubernetes is going to, I find that it uses a little bit more resources. Um, just, you know, probably the overhead well, sure, of having structure. Yeah, right. There's more going on yeah. from that standpoint. Um, when I originally did this, we did, we did an episode on this. I forgot how many episodes ago where I did Kubernetes. But what I didn't realize at the time, and I feel stupid for this now, is, uh, you know, here I'm, I'm telling Alex, and I'm still going to say this, by the way. I'm telling Alex, I'm like, hey, like, there's a lot that's assumed here in the Kubernetes setup, in particular this, mm. right? Yeah. This thing of, well, hey, you need to have some type of Kubernetes engine installed. Why don't you use Minikube? Now, at the time, there was Kubernetes support for Docker. I didn't really know it, though, until you got on the show one time and showed it. Right. Uh, so, so if I just go to preferences. And that was my first ever uh, Kubernetes deployment. And so I didn't even yes. think about, because I had noticed it in the Docker menu. I yeah, hadn't even that's thought right. to go get Minikube. I was like, oh, well, I already have it here in Docker. I'll just use that. Yeah. So the first time I went through and I did the whole thing for installing Minikube and doing all that. Yeah. Minikube is actually really cool. I like sure. it. But there's a lot more work involved to get that going. Now in Docker, I should note, by the way, I'm using Docker Edge, but this is also available in the normal stable Docker. Um, but mm -hmm. you see this little enable Kubernetes. You just click it on. That's it. Done. And it'll actually deploy Kubernetes, and you'll have both Docker and Kubernetes, right? So this is really cool. Let me uh, clear this out. Because it greatly simplifies this whole process. So if I ignore this and say, okay, I've... Hmm. I just lost your audio. Did you do something? Hmm. Can you check your audio? All right, 
we'll try to get David's audio back. Let's see. Go to Blue hello, Blue hello, Blue hello. That's better. Yeah, you're back. Okay, you hear me now. All right, I switched mics. Let me go back to my my. Uh, I forget what it's called. My yeah. Yeti, real quick. Let's yeah, see. Yeah. How about that? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yep. Do you hear me now? Yep. I blue jeans just got funky or something. I don't that know. That was what weird. Here. Yeah. Right. Okay. It was weird. Right. Crisis We're good. averted. All right. Woo okay. So, um, so now if you just check on Kubernetes, check Kubernetes in Docker, it greatly simplifies all of this, right? Without installing Minikube or doing any of that. So I'm going to follow his instructions. Now, mind you, uh, you'll notice that in the all in one, um, clone that it already has a K8s directory. Uh, he does, in fact, set up, he, he checked in or committed a, um, a default setup, right? But in this case, I'm going to follow the instructions here because this is what's really neat. So if you haven't used Compose before, Compose will take all the settings that are in your Docker Compose YAML and it'll automatically generate all of the deployment, service, pod uh, configuration files that you need uh, for Kubernetes. So when you actually do this, it'll actually generate these files for you. It's really nice. So if you make a change to your Docker Compose, then all you have to do is say, oops, this right here, and it will generate all the files for you. And that's it. That one thing takes all the stuff out of my Docker Compose YAML, generates those. Now I'm Super gonna go nice. ahead and navigate into my Kubernetes directory that you see here, like he says right there, and I'm gonna say kubeapply-f. Now again, I don't now have to install Minikube or anything because I'm using the Kubernetes supplied by Docker. So boom. Now here's here's a key thing though about Kubernetes and Docker. The access point where where in Docker things I think are a little bit more straightforward about how I get access to my containers and my services and stuff after the fact. In Kubernetes with Docker and Kubernetes in general, it's a little more obfuscated, right? So um, now you can see that I did generate um, I did generate a set of containers because this is Kubernetes uh, running in Docker. And Docker. Sense because the way that the most of Docker, the way it's oriented is, or a lot of it, how it's oriented in a Docker desk on the desktop is oriented toward helping you run things in the desktop. Whereas Kubernetes is more yeah. like, this is the production deployment. Yes, I'm, yes. I'm sure right. I'm oversimplifying, but anyway, I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. So, so here, I mean, right, I can still use Kitematic and I can actually use Docker in this case. This is actually a nice little feature. Um, I can use that to get at my logs, even though I can do that through Kubernetes as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. So if I look at my uh, DSE, if I click on that in this container, even though it's running through Kubernetes, I can actually get access through a container and I can get my logs and stuff. So that's kind of cool. Um, but down here, I'm doing a watch on get pods. So you can see these guys are up and running. Now, here is oh, a yeah. cool difference nice. okay. between what happens with Kubernetes and Docker. So remember before I had this con this condition where it takes a minute for my DSC uh, instance to come up and for the app to do its thing and everything. And before the Java backend had timed out, right? Timed out waiting. In this case with Kubernetes, if that happens, it'll just restart the pod. You know, it does it automatically for you. Kubernetes will kind of like auto heal. Right, so if it if it exit out, so it'll go. Oh, I'm going to start you back up, um, and so it's actually kind of nice. It's a um, really nice does, feature. Yeah, does it now? Does it fix why we're getting here in the in the first place? And maybe we should change to like again using an exponential timeout, you know, time or something like that, so we don't just say go a hundred times and say quit. Yeah. Well, we should still a, make that change, right? Because in like like you're saying, because it, we don't have that nice restart capability within the Docker world. On desktop, right? Yeah, right. So, so this is cool from this standpoint because Kubernetes actually helps you kind of like, like I said, it'll self heal. So while this is starting up, if any of my generator, my web, um, I'm gonna leave Studio there. Yeah, if my generator, my web, or my uh, backend with Java, if any one of them time out, they'll just restart it. No big deal. It's kind of cool, and it'll hook it back up and everything. But here's the key difference: is uh, and I'm still obviously we're still waiting for this to come up, but. Remember before I had an external access point, right, where I could talk over localhost to my web container over port 3100 in this case, right, because uh, Kubernetes was using 3000 or whatever port. By default, though, 
Kubernetes is not just going to expose that. So that took me a little bit of figuring out, um, ended up not being all that bad uh, once you know what to do. Um, but until you get there, um, that part can be uh, a little interesting. But there's a very, very, very simple fix for it. So check this out. Um, let's do keep control. Whoopsie. Okay, let's see. Which one was it? Uh, I think it was this one. Actually, here, let's, I don't have to, we can just use the Linux way of doing things. Okay. Um, oh, I still, <laughs> I got to kill the service. Hold on. <laughs> I forgot. I left, I had it running earlier and uh, I just learned how to do this. Where'd it go? Where's kill, die, die? I want you to kill. I want to say it's just... Oh, where'd it go? Do I do it on this side? Now you guys get to watch me struggle. That's always fun. Mm -hmm. Struggle, struggle. I'll admit my, um, my cube control command list is not full and complete yet. Uh, I have not figured all of that out. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's forgivable. Yeah. All right, that's okay. I'm not that worried about it right now. All right, let's see. How are we doing over here? So so what I did, though, notice how... Okay. Uh, I kind of threw myself off there. Oh, here it is. Here it is. I, forget. I see it. 631. I just was reading right over it. Let's delete that guy. I know I did that. Here we go. Now, if we take a look at, I don't have this service, my service, right? And if I look at my web deployment, because that's the key thing. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, we see my, I want to describe. Now, by default... Here we go. Right. So we get the web service is the key thing, right? Right. Because that's the access point into uh, my my app here. Uh, is it not? No, oh, it's not ready yet. How are we doing up here? Are we have we. OK, it's almost there. It's almost there. Good, good, good. Oh, notice, by the way, you see the back end over here. It already had a restart. That's what I was talking Where about. So it probably timed out right here on the left hand side. See that guy it says restart. Oh, I do see that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you need lower, me to make that bigger. Left. Yeah. And he timed out over here, but yeah. now he's going to right. restart. Right. Right. So that's actually yeah. okay. part of what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, the proof that it happened. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. All right. Let's see. Let me grab another one of these commands. Here we go. This is what I was looking for. So if you notice, when I get my web service, right, notice how my external IP is none, mm. uh, even though I have this port. Now, now, this IP is not on my local network. It's internal to what's going on in Kubernetes, right? Right. So if I were to try to access this IP to some port, it's not going to It's you, not gonna work. By the way... You can't get there. Yeah, I can't get there, right? It's all internal yeah. to what Kubernetes is doing. Now, notice, by the way, that the port's 3100. You remember I made that change in the Docker Compose YAML for Docker? So again, that translated over automatically. That would have been three thousand otherwise. Um, so, mm -hmm. so that was that's that change when I did the uh, compose convert. So the key thing is at this point, even if this is all up and running and everything is working wonderfully, um, I can't get to it, right? Uh, so that was one of the things with Kubernetes at first was a little bit like, uh, okay, like can I do that? Okay, look at this. This is cool. So notice that says configuration on DC users and schema complete. You yep. notice my DSC config pod completed, right? Right. So that one, that one is, by the way, DSC config. It's a one-time run. It's a run and done. There's no need to keep it running. So the way that it was configured was to just be a pod, and it just runs and quits. It's done. Um, where the other services there, they're actual services and deployments, and they will regenerate new pods if one of them exits out. So that's a difference there. Yeah, I really um, like that too. And I took, that's that's a configuration that makes sense to me. Yes. Okay, good. You can see that the back end is hooked up. So DSC must be doing its thing. If I take a look at web, web is... Automatic is a little slow sometimes with it. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, it should be following the logs. Okay, it's not there yet. Generator it says that those guys are running, though. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Okay, so, like I said, if I try to go to localhost 3100 or something, I'm not going to get anything. Yeah. Right, I'm yeah. not going to get anything because I have not exposed any external IP. So what I'm going to do now is, and again, if I... Get up to it somewhere here. Here I can just look at my history. Oh, that's what I want. I can do that. So what I learned was that I can do this. I can expose the web deployment uh -huh. to a particular name like this, and I forgot my kube control part. I keep doing that. Don't mind me. And again, this is all through the Docker Kubernetes experience. So now I've exposed the web deployment with a name called my service. And now if so I do it this, actually restarted that, that pod or no, no, it's just, exposing. no, it doesn't restart it. It just, it just exposes. But now That's what's nice. interesting yeah. here is okay. that I don't. Okay. Good. Oh, that is interesting. Why? Why that did not expose my guy? Yep, you do already exist. But why don't you have an external IP? Oh, that's a head scratcher. This is making me a liar twice now. Yeah, all right. Hmm. All right, let me see. I put the commands in. Developed the a video mind channel. of its own. Yeah, let's see if did I because I know I put this in the Killer Video channel earlier because I was like, hey guys, we don't want to miss this because I was going. My point mm. was is that we need to put this in by default. This should just be there because nobody should have to go through what I'm going through right now mm -hmm, to do right. this. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm just double checking in my command list here. Give me a moment. Okay, let's do this. Control. Get services. Oh, there it is. Okay, maybe I was... Oh, would you look at that? Interesting. Oh, that is interesting. Let's try... I did not recognize or realize something about this. Let's see what happens. Ha! That's hilarious. Notice... Okay, so I... It happened so fast, I missed what the fix was. So check this out. I had port 3100 in there before because that's what I had configured when we were working with Docker and yeah. I had Kubernetes enabled and it was using 3000 for something. Notice that, again, our web deployment is configured to 3100 um, because that's what we set in the Docker Compose YAML uh, because I was trying to get around... I'm in the wrong directory... There we go. Because I was trying to get around the fact that 3000 was being used by Kubernetes, right? So what's interesting is that here the web deployment is in fact set to 3100, but the service here is actually being set to 3000. Um, I must have done something uh -huh. okay. early, earlier that I'm missing or whatever. I don't remember explicitly setting that, but interestingly enough, this is actually coming up to 3000. Um, but now notice, when I go to 3000, it actually, I do get access. And I can see that this is this is this deployment here, right? Um, matter of fact, if I were to do something. The, the, not the Kubernetes deployment. This is the Kubernetes deployment. Oh, this is, is Kubernetes. Okay. okay. Yes, because we expose localhost on 3000 with a, a load balancer service into the okay. uh, web, uh, into the web deployment. Right. I'm just not sure. I, you know, I didn't do it before where I had changed the port. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, where I changed the port. So I wonder if there's something there I just wasn't aware of. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, so this is doing what I would expect it to do. Um, so it is running on 3000, and this is through Kubernetes. Um, and and again, it, what's really nice is, you know, in the case of the back end uh, timing out, it actually just restarted it. So the Kubernetes deployment ends up being um, a little bit more robust, which I guess is kind of the point if you're going to be running something like Kubernetes. So that's that's actually pretty cool to see. So 
at the end of the day, the nice thing is, is that now with the Docker based Kubernetes, it's like a couple lines in each of them. Yes. What I just went through, we need a default into our configuration and make it so no one has to worry about it. Or we can add the line. I don't know if that's defaultable. I'm sure it is. It's got to be. Um, but if not, for some reason, we can just add that line into um, the instructions here. But it ends up just coming down to a couple lines. Um, the one thing I will say in there, you still have to install Compose, right? You do need Compose uh, to, and to do this. But um, uh, the rest of it is just there. So it, it makes it like seriously easy. And you, so you can get the ecosystem up and running in either one. Docker, Kubernetes, like super simple with the all-in-one piece. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and you can see all my views are being generated. So the generator is mm -hmm. doing its mm -hmm. thing. Yep, got yep. a new video there. All that kind of deal. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So then... One last thing. Why don't we go ahead and say die. Now, oh, by the way, killing things here is a little bit different. Um, you don't just like like Docker Compose down or something. Oh, right. You'll notice in my history, I have to go in here and delete. Say, yeah. I got to delete. Yeah, that was when I had to kind of learn by experimentation as well. Yeah. So now, though, while that's going and doing that, oopsie. Man, I am just fat finger and stuff today. Fat finger. Do, 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 do. So if I go in here and oh here, I'm gonna put this back by the way. Because that threw me off. The things mm -hmm. you uh Yeah, the values we changed for debugging that somehow get, yeah. getting checked in. So here, notice I've got um the Java backend. Now I can just change this. Let's go find the node one. Where do I have it? It's up in here somewhere. go this way actually no i'll just go to um docker hub because that's where these are anyway no 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 here we go node right um so i want this grab that guy go here and oopsie and it's version 3.0.0 i don't need alpha 2 so that's it from that standpoint i'm gonna kill this this should be dead okay need to go back and Remember, I have to recreate my Kubernetes files. I'm going to do that. Okay, so you edited your directory. Docker Compose configuration, and so then you have to update right. your Kubernetes. Yeah, that's right. So I just updated stuff. those with Compose. Now I'm going to apply. And you'll see over here, it's, it should update here in a moment. Ooh, error image poll. Ooh, I broke something. I keep breaking things while I'm doing this today. This is wonderful. Let's see. Where did you see that? I don't see. Right oh, here. Oh, in the status for the back end. The, I the see get it. Pod, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that was it. I wonder if I fat fingered something. Let's see. Oh, there's no question it's your fault. It's just the. <laughs> yeah. Oh, back end, back end. Oh, okay. look what I did. I. You put the wrong uh, version number. All right. So I'm curious. What happens if I just reapply? Oh no, I've got to redo my compose. Mm hmm. I wonder if I can just reapply it. That's fun. Yeah. Let's find out. Like, like I would do with the Docker compose up, right? It would just relaunch. You're doing it the hard way, but easy for you, right. hard for. Kubernetes, not sure. Oh, look at that. So it's terminating Term the terminating one, and it's, the old, ah, yeah. that's totally cool. Creating the new actually... one. We're just going to watch its uh, state transition, I suppose, here. State transition. Oh, it's probably going to pull it down, right? It's got to... Oh, yeah. yep, it is. It's pulling yeah. it down right now. I can see my download. Okay. But the cool thing is the rest of the containers are going to do their thing. Yeah. Right. So yeah. while we're pulling that down, I don't have to wait. 
right? In Docker, what would have happened? I would have to wait for my image to come down before I could move on. Here, it's just going to go, right? And so I still have DSE getting loaded. You know, I've got my DSE config doing its thing. Um, mm -hmm. All right, I wonder if that is getting close because my download has significantly decreased. Oh, 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 oh I thought I saw something. Now, by the way, there is a dashboard in Kubernetes. There's all sorts of other stuff you can use. I found, though, that as much as that's nice, you have to actively refresh it, which is kind of annoying. Um, so I like doing this here. If I can just kind of see what my pods are doing. So now I'm curious, because if it has to wait a little bit longer, because the back end is where the services are, I wonder if these guys will... Um, I don't remember if the web and generator timeout or not. Um, so I'm curious to see if they time out. If they do, then Kubernetes should restart them. Yeah, those are just going to retry over and over. I don't know if you can hear that sound, but that's mm -hmm. one of my greyhounds in the back. That's uh, mm, dead is it bugging. Tail thumping? Do you know what? Do, do you know what dead bugging is? No. This is like it's when the dog like gets all up on their back and they just lay there like. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, apparently that's a thing that uh, um, a lot of greyhounds like to do. And my one, yeah, hi buddy, yeah. Especially if your face like table. ten minutes to quitting time on a Friday afternoon. Oh yeah. These guys usually get unruly at like 4.30 because they're like, hey, it's time to feed me. Yeah. Oh, okay, here. Okay, so it looks like it's finally created the container. Mm -hmm. There it is. Yay, here's my yep. back end. Okay, so it's going to start doing its thing. So we're just waiting for DSC at this point. Getting to a point where the config can do its thing. But the cool thing is that this is Node, right? You'll see that the uh, the logging output's a little bit different. It's a lot clearer once... Um, uh, once it's all connected up and doing thing. Ah, look at this. I have restarts on generator and the web, so they uh -huh. timed out, and now it's automatically restarting them. That's it's just such cool. a nice little yeah feature. Yeah. Um, also notice that the service here is DSE. You could do that in both Docker and Kubernetes. Um, yeah. Hold on, buddy. We'll be done. Yeah. Be patient. Yeah. Be patient talking to my dog for those of you who don't know um so you can you can do this in both docker and kubernetes but it's not something this is what we were doing with etcd before right we were using etcd to essentially facilitate our service discovery so when i had something like dse that was at a particular ip address and port we'd store that up in etcd and then whatever the service was would talk to etcd get the keys you know do all that none of that is needed now it just it just talks with service discovery directly so it's a really nice little added feature he's got in there all right, so we're just waiting for this part. Ooh, it's timing out too. Okay. Yeah, man. I mm. the difference between th this is totally blue jeans. Having blue jeans on with the video just sucks all of the CPU resources. Yeah. But not the CPU. But that's like, the CPU. But this is cool is though okay. because this is I find this to be actually neat because so ignoring me right now. You can. Oh, I am. I heard you. I heard you. I, I wasn't ignoring you, Jeff. I wasn't. I think you were. But this is, to me, this is cool, though, because you can see this is where Kubernetes will actually start to just heal, right, as things are timing out and doing that kind of deal. Yeah, it's a great demonstration of that. Yeah. It's super cool. All right, so is everything that you are yep. working on here, is this all committed code, or you have some stuff that you're still working oh, on locally? Yeah, so no, from the all-in-one standpoint, everything now is committed. Everything has been all of the underlying versions that are supporting the whole thing. Uh, so web UI, the DSC config, um, the generator, mm -hmm. all of their, all of their uh, releases have been promoted. They're no longer release candidates. They're actually fully promoted. It's all ready to go. Right, so from the all-in-one standpoint, you can just go, right? And it's actually uber simple to get this stuff up and running. Um, the next thing we're doing is we just did, you'll, I'll, I'll pop over while I'm waiting for the other part. So we just did 
a huge, huge update to Killer Video Java. I kind of mentioned that in the beginning. You're going to notice, hopefully, that I put this big old bold statement right here. Um, uh, well, I have a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Is this, this is the original Killer Video Java that we're talking about now? Not you, the Cedric up- Killer Video Java V2 or what am I looking at? This is V2, right? Okay. So if you oh, remember... Oh, so, okay, wow, okay. So yeah. originally, Cedric uh, had forked, forked his own, created, because he was doing a lot of refactoring, a lot of rework and everything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so he wanted to keep it separate, but then, you know, we kind of we all debated as a team back and forth, like, okay, well, we have this existing repo with this existing link, this github.com slash killer videos slash killer video java right dash java Mm -hmm. that's hard linked all over the place we you know we've we've had this going for years like does it make sense to then all of a sudden push people over to a new repo or should we go ahead and use the existing one so then people who are using that there will just get the updates naturally right um so we decided to go ahead and use the existing one Hmm. but this was a huge huge update um it's been a long time coming Lots of, you know, lots of pathing differences, all sorts of things like that. Um, so thankfully, we've been versioning our code, right? So the latest stable is, in fact, 2.1.0. Um, so if you are going there right now, just understand that master is essentially experimental. Um, even though I envision it's going to be uh, GA soon, I'd say within the next week. So do they select um, but, right, somebody go into master, the pull down there for what? Build? Are you saying that you select the yeah, tag, so, or is that a branch? You y- select the tag. It, it's both. We didn't delete the branch, so uh-huh. so the you could go either to the release itself, um, and you could just go to. Oh. Um, you could just go to two that one dot Okay, so did you? I'm sorry, all the questions that. No, 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 know, no. That, go this, ahead. This is my did I screw mode. everything up? This isn't. This yes. is not demonstration mode, and Jeff is <laughs> teeing you up with questions. This is this is real dev questions here because I'm trying to catch Uh-oh. up. Oh, real dev, real saying. dev. Did you? So there were two repos. There was a. Um, was it a fork? No, he started over. He. Yeah, he had originally forked, yeah. but then he eventually brought his stuff into a branch here for V2. Oh, so okay. Okay, so got it. So you merged all. There was another forked repo, Killer Video Java V2. Now that has all been brought back in. Yes, okay. that's right. Good, good, good. That's right. So I had gone to, I had previously cloned uh, Killer Video Java V2 on my machine. And then you now talking, you can go back to Killer Video Java. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I did a git pull on Killer Video Java V2, and it's like, oh, you're already up to date. Yeah. But that's not what I need to be looking yeah. at. I need to actually just delete this local copy, clone Killer Video Java, and then I will have the latest stuff. Yes, that's right. Sorry that's to right. belabor that. So, I just I'm, no, I'm no, not at all. Okay. Yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna keep going with Killer Video Java. You won't have to worry about the separate Killer Video v, Java V2 repo anymore. It, we're just gonna continue on. It's gonna get a new version. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, it'll probably be three like the rest of them. We'll get them all in line. Um, but there's a lot of exciting stuff coming with this version. Um, for one, uh, swapping out the uh, memory-based message bush with Kafka. Um, that's actually fun. Uh, again, the no etcd support that we talked about. Um, separate from like the refactoring, the way that Cedric had actually rebuilt things, um, he he did it is in it a optional? much more elegant and... Is it... What's, what's optional? Kafka? Yeah. Yes. It's yeah, Kafka's swappable. optional. It, what, does it, what does it yeah. default to? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I have. I don't think it defaults to Kafka from what I've seen in his config, but that's a good question that we should maybe pull Cedric on. I wonder if that V2 is going to get deprecated then? I would think so. Eventually? Yeah. And then, because at this point, then we can just work on this version on. Because for the longest time, right, we've been playing this game of, well, yep. we have the killer video Java, then we have the V2, and then we got to update this one, and then update that one. Now, now we're finally going to be on a single version and can uh, can focus our efforts. I'm so people. glad. Yeah, and he did from the Kafka standpoint, and the other from the message bus standpoint. He made it modular. He made it modular with etcd. He made it modular with whatever service discovery. Um, he put in really nice DAOs and DTOs and such. Like he really did a nice job of kind of 
compartmentalizing things and making it more modular um, so we can better extend it moving into the future. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and then we, we talked today, we're going to probably remove these, config, these Docker Compose YAMLs and go back to um, what you did and make, come back full circle with the killer video Docker common stuff. Right, which we talked about on previous streams. Yes. Yep, yep. Okay. Oh, there it goes. Yeah, okay, so check it out. So now it's publishing. So let's let's see what happens when I go to... Um, let me... My poor box is just dying right now, though. Come on, where are you? No, not that. I don't want that. Let's get services. Okay, notice I have, th have localhost on 3000. Right, so I'm going to mm -hmm. go to, and this is with the Node.js version, so that's different. And, and... Wait for it. Hey! There it is. Yeah, so so here, I just swapped out the back end. I could do that with uh, Python soon, right, soon. Um, I can't remember if the C-sharp version is set up like that just yet, right? Um, but yeah, the, the, I mean, it's a one-line switch in the Docker Compose YAML and then you just regenerate the compose, uh, the uh, Kubernetes uh, YAMLs with the compose, and that's it. Now I'm running in a totally different version uh, of the back end, and nobody else cares. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's so much easier to switch back and forth and do all that now. Um, and then when we come, like I said, full circle with what you're doing in Killer Video Docker Common, um, I think then between either here or there, because like what I'm really excited about is now being able to tie this into what the the configuration work you're doing. Because maybe I want to do metrics collection with Prometheus and Grafana. Maybe I want to add an op center. Maybe I want to do other you know. And we've got all these different options that you can tag on. But yeah. it was a little harder to do before, and now it should be like uber simple. So anyway, so this finally we have completed. No, you're uh, not referencing at least... an actual um, car sh rideshare company, right? Not uber simple. Wait, say that again? Like, oh, not uber simple. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the company would do it, but uber simple. Just no, simple. not right. Uber, like the original. You the know, original Uber. Just the word. Yeah, yeah the just the word Uber. Okay. Yeah, just the word. Just the word. So anyway, yeah. So there you go. Um, so I'm really happy with today, even though um, this was probably a little cowboyish for me to start this on a Friday uh, while everybody else was already gone. Um, I'll admit that. Um, uh, you know, again, we have versions and tags and stuff, uh, so I think we we do that part of it right. No, this so is I wasn't uh, worried. just to editorialize for a minute here. This is um, this is I, <laughs> okay. So anyway, this is really fantastic because we've had multiple <laughs> independent strands of development that have been improving different different yeah. aspects of the project, and yeah. we are now at the moment where, uh, rightly or wrongly, like maybe we. Maybe we shouldn't have done it this way, but there is a little bit of a big bang here where like we're bringing the standardized configuration, modernizing the way that yeah. we're configuring things and making sure that all the latest changes that anybody has been working on have been brought into the fold, so to speak. Yeah. And so yes. it feels like a major moment. It feels good. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, and it feels like the right thing. One of the th the funny thing is the thing that there was the forcing function, in my opinion, that's really causing us to make sure that we get all this is that we um, the the boot camp that we did at Accelerate, where people were using our app as um, their the mechanism for learning how to code on our new cloud product. Yeah, our Cassandra as a service running in Google Cloud. Killer Video was the app that was used to do that. But right. since we had also been making, we were agonizing a little bit because all of these changes that we had been making that were partially completed uh, or, you know, kind of on a longer trajectory, they weren't, those were being done at the same time the boot camp original was being created. Yeah. So now yeah. we're updating the boot camp because everyone keeps asking us, okay, you did boot camp at Accelerate, but I couldn't go. So when are you doing another boot camp? And we're like, well, yeah. we're revising it. Well, now we have a baseline for the revision for the boot camp, incorporating all the latest of everything. This is a good news story. Yep. Yeah, so, it is. Cool. It is. All right. And with that, we're exactly at time. We're exactly on time. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Great. And happy Friday, everybody. Great tour. Have Thank a good weekend. Too. All right. See you around. I'll see you next week. All right, guys. Bye.